시청자 여러분 안녕하십니까 TVK에서 21세기 첨단의학 소개를 담당하고 있는 신경내과 전문의 전희택입니다 오늘은 인공렌스 이식 수술의 새로운 발전이라는 제목으로 1년 전에 모셨던 UCLA 임상 교수이신 밀턴 추 박사님을 모셨습니다 주 박사님은 또한 많은 안과 논문을 발표하셨고 여러 개의 FDA 특허도 갖고 계십니다. 그러면 밀턴 주 박사님을 소개하겠습니다. Thank you coming over joining us. Thank you very much for inviting me. How was the traffic today? Oh, it wasn't too bad. Okay. I Did you out. find the, the good parking space downstairs? <laughs> I followed your advice. I think I got a good spot. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. So we'll be talking the advances new advances of uh, intraocular lenses, artificial lenses. So um, how, how many uh, lenses uh, have you implanted uh, last week? Last week? Uh, a couple. couple? <laughs> it's not bad. It's going to be uh, over 100 a uh, year. Yes, uh, easily over 100 okay. a year. So w what are the, the uh, accommodating lenses when you uh, say accommodating, what are being accommodated there? Well, accommodation refers to uh, recreating the natural focusing ability mm -hmm. of the human eye. I see. And we, uh, we <clears throat> know that there are muscles, the ciliary muscle, and we also know that the, the natural lens of the eye is flexible and changes shape in order to uh, allow people to see at various ranges, That's various done by distances. the uh, ciliary muscles. That's right. Tiny little muscles right. inside your eyeball. Unfortunately, right? you know, vision changes as we, as we grow up. And uh, people who've had perfect vision, many times when they're in their 40s and 50s, suddenly find that they can't see up close anymore. Right. And they have to resort to wearing reading glasses. Right. And then later on, uh, the vision becomes even even more limited and uh, and then uh, the lens of the eye actually changes in terms of the clarity and we refer to that as a cataract change. Cataracts. Yeah. So th that means uh, the uh, some kind, kind of a cloudy material is being deposited into your natural lenses uh, That's right. in the eyes. A lot of times people are under the misconception that it's some sort of a film or a growth, but actually it's a change in, mm -hmm. the, uh, in the clarity of the, of the natural lens. I have a model here. Okay. I can show a little bit about that. Uh, why don't you show, uh, show us that th these, are the, uh, these are the eyeballs. This is the right? eye, right. So why don't you show us the structure of the uh, eyeball, right. uh, where the lens is located. Sure. So in the front part of the eye, there's a clear window called the cornea. Correct. Behind that clear window is the iris of the eye. Iris. Which can be blue or green or brown right. in my case. And then behind the iris sits our natural lens. Okay. And our natural lens is mm -hmm. clear. That's right. Just the way this lens looks That's the lens. in the model. We have in the eyeball. Now, now do you, you brought as we the age, actual, actual uh, uh, the lenses you implant. Yes. The, the the actual size of the lens. I'm going to show that. Can you show us? Sure. So here is the uh, the actual here's the model of the of our lens, and it shows the clarity. See how clear right, that is. Right. And as we develop a cataract, what can happen is that there can be some cloudy areas. Now, in this this model, you can see that in the center but not all the way throughout the lens, there's already some cloudiness. And then the cloudiness can progress to involve the entire lens. I this see. one is sort of a whitish, okay. opaque so lens. Now, th this is the uh, uh, early part uh, early part of the uh, cataract. That's an early, yeah, uh, what we this. refer to as a polar cataract, okay. posterior polar okay. subcapsular. So the cloudiness is only at the center. So this is and primarily it in the center. And more widespread. That's right. Is that and the then, next one? And that's the next one here. That's this, mm -hmm. this model here. So th this cloudiness covered entire lens. So the entire lens becomes cloudy. No wonder people cannot see through this. But it gets even worse. Is that right? What the, the color starts to change. Oh. It gets even darker. Okay. So this lens now is uh, 
uh, darker than the previous lens, mm -hmm. the cataract, which means that uh, not only is the light blurred, mm -hmm. but less light gets in the eye. So everything gets darker and dimmer. So and eventually it can get to a point where the person is practically blind. But fortunately, so people can see through this kind of uh, cloud. Uh, they, they don't see well at all. Oh, I see. They don't see well at so all. So that's when you stage. need the uh, artificial lens, I guess. So that's when we do cataracts. Okay. We actually, we, we don't let it. We don't want it to go uh, mm. to this extreme. We, we'd like to correct so it before. So tell us how, how big it, is the actual lens. So the actual, the actual lens that we use. You'll be impressed to see this. It's pretty marvelous when you think about the technology involved. There it is. That that's the lens. That small, tiny, tiny little medical device. Round. Lets millions and millions of it's people like a crystal, crystal see again clear. every year. I it's see. crystal clear. This this is the. Uh, that's the actual size. Uh, it's the actual size of the artificial lens you implant. That's correct. So this goes to your eye. That goes inside the eye. Now, what is the tiny little wire going sideways? Those are called haptics or arms. I see. They're supporting arms. They help it's support. It's like a hinges. Sort of. They, they support the lens inside the eye mm -hmm. so that it doesn't move around and it centers properly. Okay. And, uh, and you know, last time on the show, we talked about the invention mm -hmm. of the intraocular lens with uh, Sir Harold Ridley right. and the Rayner Company. Right. I've got some interesting news about the Rainer Company. They've uh, created a, a, a new center where they're going to house all of their manufacturing and their R&D. And they also have the educational programs and it's named the Ridley Innovation Center. Hmm. So it's very exciting news okay. from, uh, from over overseas, across the pond. That's the in, original in lens, lens company. That's the original lens who, who company. Who provided the artificial lens to the Sir Harold Ridley. That's correct. Six, is that about 60 years ago? Is that the Exactly, first? about 60 yeah. years ago. So Dr. Ridley implanted the lens made by uh, Rayner Company. That's exactly right. And it, that company is still existing. It still exists. And in fact, today I thought we'd talk a little bit about some of the exciting innovations that, mm -hmm. that are happening with cataract surgery. Mm -hmm. When we do cataract surgery, uh, we work inside the eye mm -hmm. in order to, to protect the eye and to help us with our various delicate maneuvers. We use uh, clear gels mm -hmm. in order to create space and to save space in the eye and, and to keep things where we want them and not floating and moving around. Mm -hmm. Well, the Rainer Company has come up with an interesting twist on some of these gels. They've added sorbitol mm -hmm. and other ingredients to the gel which provides some pharmacological mm. effects so mm. that after cataract surgery mm. is done then there's less inflammation in the eye. So mm. this is something new and innovation and uh, I'm looking forward to, uh, uh, so, to seeing uh, the results uh, of this here in the United States. Let me ask you this. When you implant the artificial lens to your uh, body, especially a small space like uh, in your eye, I'm sure there will be some kind of uh, side effects, like uh, complications of the surgery. Well, there so can be. Inflammation is part inflammation of Inflammation is one of the things that, that we have to battle. Mm. So that's the reason why most cataract patients are prescribed anti-inflammatory eye drops mm. uh, after their surgery. How, how about the infections? Infection, infection you know, fortunately, uh, knock on wood, is uh, becoming less and less common. I and hear that, that has to do uh, with the uh, infection rate is very, very small. It's in, pretty in, small in art artificial with artificial lens lenses. Implant. Yeah, it can still it can still occur and still happen. It's but, less than one uh, percent. Oh, hear. yeah, it's far less than one percent. I see. Yeah, um, and then other problems that can occur is that sometimes doctors and, and nurses can have difficulty handling the lens. Mm -hmm. What do I mean by that? Well, <clears throat> the artificial lenses we're using now. Uh, by and large, the majority of them are flexible. They're right. flexible so they can be rolled and folded in order to uh, in enable them to be inserted inside the eye through a very, very tiny, small incision. Mm -hmm. But during that process of folding it mm -hmm. and unfolding it, problems mm -hmm. can arise if the lens takes a twist or is folded improperly. Then when it unfolds in the eye, it may fold, unfold improperly or so the damage surgeon, 
damaged things or have to unfold and fold and be well someone has to manipulate fold them. a little bit right someone I has mean, to fold them and someone has to oversee right, the process manually, the, manually during the surgery so there are some now um, innovations uh, to help enhance the safety mm -hmm. and one of those innovations is something that I've been working on mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. which uses a special color micro dot mm -hmm. in order to allow doctors and nurses the ability to understand the orientation of the lens even when it's folded and rolled up. Mm -hmm. So this is something that uh, uh, I'm very excited about and uh, I presented it to the FDA and recently have so gotten this tiny FDA little approval. Artificial lens, can I touch it? Yeah, you can touch it. Th this is plastic, it's not actual. That's plastic. Lens. So th this lens is fold and, and uh, uh, tiny little uh, so that uh, you, you have to uh, manually uh, insert to the eyeball. Right. But we, we use a little... Do you have to do any uh, 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 cutting or... or, or There's make, a minimal amount stitches? of cutting. There's a middle amount of cutting. We make a tiny, a tiny cut. It's more like uh, the size of, um, of, of a, what would be needed for a, for a large needle mm -hmm. to go into the eye. And in this needle, this clear plastic needle, we shoot the rolled up lens. So it's through. less than two, three millimeters. It's, yeah, it's between, it's around two millimeters. Mm -hmm. You're right. And uh, because of that, uh, we don't need sutures uh, for the majority of, of cataract patients anymore. Now, of course, as we're shooting that lens through that little needle, mm -hmm. that's when uh, it's possible for the lens to twist or for the doctor to hold the, the, the shooter a little bit uh, uh, in, in, in not exactly the... the um, so it naturally the, unfolds the aligned, by itself. Then. The aligned angle. And then when the lens goes in the eye, it unfolds. So mm -hmm. we, but we want to make sure that we know the orientation of the lens before it unfolds. Because mm -hmm. if it unfolds the wrong way, then it might you know, scratch some That's interior right. parts of the eye, or else might fold, unfold upside down. So sometimes you have to take it out and reinsert it? Sometimes. Not often, but sometimes. Not we, rare for uh, the, the experienced surgeons, I guess. Well, you know, um, some of these uh, events can happen regardless of your experience, anyway. you know. Yeah. But, um, but normally this surgery takes about how long? 20 it minutes? Takes, it takes minutes? anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes. I see. Yeah. The, including your uh, anesthesia? The anesthesia we use nowadays is um, very mild, light sedation. So we don't use general anesthesia anymore. We just use some intravenous. Okay, so and conscious sedation. Exactly. And the patients are awake. Patients They're awake, but they're relaxed. Right. We know that people the, are nervous. The vital so. signs are all normal. patient is awake. If they want to move, they can move. Well, but if they want to move, they have to let us know they're going to move. <laughs> but, but they won't move. But, so, but so, yes, you know, so, they let us know they can, they can move, but we don't want them moving their head or, right. or their you, eye. You can you know. sedate stronger and make them uh, not movable. Anyway, how long does surgery last uh, nowadays? The surgery lasts nowadays between 10 and 20 minutes. 10, 20 minutes. Yeah. So it's a very quick. Uh, surgery. From the patient's perspective, usually it goes by pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. they're, ha they're happy about that. Right. You know. Nowadays, so with this type of conscious sedation anesthesia, they, uh, you stop the anesthesia and patient uh, wake up right away. They walk that's, out of the surgery. That's one of the nice things. The, yeah, uh, they, surgical they, surgery. There's, there's, a, there's a minimal you know, right. um, effect on, on, on the patient that day. You but you, you have to be... Uh, uh, careful next uh, seven days or ten days, how, how long do you make patient uh, uh, stay home? Well, and, you know, every case is a little bit different and certainly every, every surgeon has their own protocol. Mm -hmm. uh, but in general, people can be up and around, mm -hmm. you know, pretty quickly, pretty rapidly. Most people, you know, advise uh, to stay away from swimming or from getting, you know, pool or spa water in an operated eye, recently operated eye for the first, you know. And also eye surgeon has to follow the patient 
periodically for oh, yeah. what, three weeks? We, uh, we monitor the patients, you know, closely. Weekly basis? We see them the day after the operation, mm -hmm. and then usually see them uh, a few days later. Mm -hmm. So, overall, it's very safe uh, operations. It's very safe. And the uh, results The results, are you know, good. are getting better and better. <clears throat> uh, not too long ago, um, all the patients would receive basically the same kind of lens product, which mm. was we refer to as a monofocal, which means a single focus lens. Mm -hmm. uh, however, there have been a lot of advancements. Right. So one of the uh, advancements uh, that's become very popular is using what's called a toric lens. Toric lens. So a toric lens means that the lens actually uh, has astigmatism correction built into the product. Right. So this lens product now is very, very nice when a patient has a significant amount of natural astigmatism because now we can offer them a way to further enhance and improve their vision. And then beyond that, we have a, a whole class of uh, lenses known as multifocal lenses. Right. And as the name implies, that's a lens that has multiple focus zones. So in addition to being able to see the distance clearly without glasses, now patients can simultaneously see up close without glasses. Uh, and that's on the basis of uh, rings that are built into uh, the artificial lens. It's like a, a progressive uh, glasses, is a that A little right? bit, a little bit in terms of um, the idea of, of having a greater range of vision. But um, the rings are different. Let me show you. I have some mm -hmm. models. So um, this model shows uh, the standard lens. Mm -hmm. And the standard lens uh, is a monofocal product. So it corrects uh, the vision the same way throughout the entire lens. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter if the lens is twisted one way or the other. Mm -hmm. And it usually uh, corrects the distance vision. So people need to wear reading glasses. Here's a model of the toric lens. This lens corrects to stigmatism. And if you'll notice, there are a few little spots here right. at the edges on either side. And this shows the doctor the axis of the astigmatism correction inside the lens. Okay. Now this lens, when we implant it in the patient's eye, needs to be aligned, mm. rotationally aligned, mm. in order to line up mm. with the patient's Mm. astigmatism in order to correct it properly. Mm. So unlike um, uh, the standard lens where it doesn't matter mm. the rotational alignment, with this lens the rotational alignment is very very important. So it's a very delicate uh, procedure. I mean, if you so there's more, there's more, uh, it's technically more, much more right. involved because you need to uh, analyze the patient's eye more carefully before the operation in order to understand the astigmatism and where it is. And then when you do the operation you have to, uh, oh, actually, before you do the operation, you have to, to plan which, uh, which, how much astigmatism can be corrected based upon the available uh, lens products. And then during the operation, you have to line up the lens to the patient's astigmatism. Okay. And then the multifocal lens, I referred to those rings. Mm -hmm. We'll take a look at it right here. Here's a multifocal lens, mm -hmm. and this is a lens that corrects distance mm -hmm. and near, mm -hmm. and it does so on the basis of these, these different, uh, different rings, rings yeah. which split light mm -hmm. and, and focus light both at distance and at near. Unlike bifocals or a progressive lens and eyeglasses, you don't have to look in a particular position in order to take advantage of the rings. The rings are going to work all the time for you, it's and amazing. as a result, uh, you can see the distance now, and you can see the near without having to wear glasses. So it's, it's like pretty amazing. You're wearing a glass w without uh, being able to see it or touch it. That's right. You cannot correct your uh, eyeglasses like this. Looking ahead, there's even some more futuristic mm. products that are on the horizon. What is there's that? There's an experimental lens, mm. which is called a, a fluid lens, and it actually, <clears throat> instead of having solid plastic, uh, as the optic, it has fluid on the interior of the lens. And this fluid can cause a lens to change curvature or shape, 
to, to change focus, sort of like the way our natural lenses used it's, it's to be. It's a very small amount of uh, humidity. It's not quite the water flowing inside. It, it's just a minute uh, amount of water, just like a, a natural uh, small eye muscles. Is that correct? I mean, well, you're right. Our, our natural lens has has fluid in it, and as we age, it becomes dehydrated. Right. There's other changes too, so it loses its uh, its suppleness, its flexibility. Well, that's why you know in the old days, the, the elderly people have uh, severe cataracts, and their their eyes not uh, look white uh, like a usual cataracts. They look yellowish white, and they cannot see through everything. That's, That's like right. up, up until uh, 30 years ago. I remember when I was doing an internship, uh, at, you know, uh, assisting the uh, eye surgeons. Uh, those days, uh, they took the eyeball out, uh, and they stay in the hospital for three days. Nowadays, the uh, patient has cataract removed and go home. Uh, in three hours, is that right? Almost. That's all. That's almost right. Nobody yeah. stays overnight. No one stays. Anymore. It's very rare. Right. You know, nowadays it's done primarily uh, on an outpatient basis, mm -hmm. and in fact, it's no longer really done uh, in hospitals um, as much. <laughs> right. They, 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 we use. You do uh, in your office. We use, more we or use less. outpatient centers, and some people right. even have an in-office, you know, operating room. But going back to the to the the um, the fluid lens. It's in this experimental lens. It's not actually water, but it's a, a, a liquid sort of plastic that they're using, mm -hmm. and uh, it's it's fascinating. It's interesting. It resembles more natural. Lenses. They're trying to recreate this sort of yeah. natural mechanism of right. changing shape and curvature, mm -hmm. in order yeah. to uh, uh, provide patients with you know uh, more uh, a greater range of vision, greater uh, freedom from glasses. No. Well, what about the uh, uh, pediatric ages? I mean, you, you're not going to implant uh, artificial lens. Uh, well, that's uh, an area of or, or the one know, year old Unfortunately, baby. some some children are born with cataracts. Severe cataracts. Severe cataracts, and there is actually a little bit of a race uh, to try to correct their vision because <clears throat> if we don't correct them be before a certain age, mm. uh, the patient may develop amblyopia or a permanently lazy eye. Mm -hmm. So we really do need to do cataract surgery quickly okay. on these uh, on these uh, pediatric cataract patients. I see. Um, uh, we, so we didn't the know. Ages, we didn't know. And, and you know, we didn't know if if using an artificial lens mm -hmm. would be the right decision mm -hmm. because the the uh, the pediatric eye is not full grown. Mm -hmm. You know, does it doesn't have the the size of an adult, uh, and so any lens we ch we would pick probably wouldn't <clears throat> be the uh, the best match mm -hmm. with with their uh, with their adult sized eye, but. Having said that, um, most pediatric cataract surgeons uh, agree that using an artificial lens is, is very, very uh, advantageous. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so, those, uh, so lenses are being used in, in, in pediatric right. cases. I'm sure they can enjoy more normal life uh, with sure. artificial lens. Sure, because if you, we uh, left them without any lens, cataracts. they'd have to wear a fake spectacles, those mm -hmm. very, very thick glasses, and, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, that's... Uh, that's that's the worst, uh, mm -hmm. worst. That's a that's an even worst uh, outcome. Lastly, let me ask you a question. Uh, I heard that you uh, applied the federal uh, drug agency uh, uh, request to use some kind of dye uh, during the uh, lens operations. Uh, uh, this this is the paper, FDA paper, uh, saying that. Uh, uh, you you uh, you were approved to use this uh, 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 some kind of uh, color uh, yeah. object. It's actually it's actually um, a uh, colored orientation mark that we put on the lens. On the lens. On the intraocular lens. Must be tiny little it's, dot. It's a tiny little micro dot. I see. But um, uh, they are. Um, What's the use of it? The use is to enhance the safety of the delivery and handling of the intraocular lens. Because now it provides a way for nurses and doctors to double check mm 
-hmm. and make sure the lens is folded properly uh, and as the lens is being uh, is, is being shot through the injector, uh, we can now uh, confirm that the lens is folded and is traveling properly. First of all, it's so it tiny that uh, you know you is all, all, all folded. Yeah, and, once and, it's folded without without this type of micro dot, uh, you can't tell anything. You really you really just rely on faith that it's going to tr it's traveling properly and it's folded properly. But now with the micro dot, you know you can confirm that it is uh, properly folded, it's traveling correctly, it hasn't taken a little twist. So you have a lo yeah. lot of time to have the uh, lens uh, positioned exact location. With the microdon, it makes things a lot easier. I'm it's, sure. Uh, because now you can tell, you can look and, and you can be sure. Okay. So anything else do uh, you uh, like to tell our audience uh, today? Any news, anything? Well, I think we've gone over a lot of things, but the overall message is that um, there's a lot to look forward to in the future in the area of eye surgery. We're getting great results now. We're going to give, give our patients even more exceptional results in the future. All right. Thank you very much for uh, coming over and Thanks for uh, teaching me. us. 시청자 여러분, 오늘의 의학 정보가 많은 도움이 되셨으리라 믿습니다. 자세한 것은 주치의와 상의해 주시기 바라며 오늘은 이만 줄이겠습니다. 감사합니다. Thank you.